Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be discussing another theory about the origin of the moon that actually is very very different from what we thought about how the moon was created before. If you still haven't subscribed to this channel, please click that subscribe button right now because there's so many more educational videos using video games coming in the future. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so what we're going to do today is we're going to discuss the absolutely new and quite an incredible theory about the creation of the moon. Now this is actually kind of based on the previous video I made where I tried to recreate the moon using Universe Sandbox 2. Uh, and I think I succeeded after a few tries, actually it took me like an hour. But in this video we're going to talk about this new theory that actually kind of puts a big axe on the old idea of the creation of the moon that's basically based on the following. So what we currently understand or we currently did understand about the creation of the moon is that we thought that it was created because um, an object that's, that was about the size of Mars but possibly composition of Mercury kind of, uh, and this is the original Earth, kind of passed by right here on the corner and basically hit the Earth uh, making it spin and um, throwing out a big sort of component of um, surface material and then that started orbiting around our planet and that created the moon. I kind of recreated this in Universe Sandbox 2, you can check out the video of course that's uh, appearing on the screen right now, but now we actually have a very different understanding and this is actually based on a simple single paper um, from I believe it's two researchers by the name of Kun Wang and Stein J uh, Jacobson, you can find their paper in the description below. And this is a, a paper that was published um, in, um, in Nature in 2016 and basically talks about something that we've discovered about the moon rocks. Now because uh, in the 60s and the 70s we went to the moon and we brought back a lot of rocks, we can actually study them and we can analyze them. And so this is what these guys did and what they discovered is that in these rocks there was quite a lot of um, really interesting isotope of potassium. Potassium is one of the elements on, uh, on the chemical table and um, this potassium seems to only really appear in cases of really 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 high pressure and high temperature situations. In other words, if something that was just brushing against the moon like this, it would really create the moon that we know today. It would really create this really really high pressure, high temperature potassium. And so what they actually realized is that there must have been some kind of a different type of collision. It must have been something that occurred almost exactly head on. Basically, um, a planet that may have actually uh, hit our planet Earth directly head on. And it very, very likely happened in this fashion. Boom. This is what they actually um, assumed that uh, that created this potassium because there was very little other explanation for it. There is really no reason why it should be in those uh, rocks that we got from the moon and there's actually quite a lot of it in them. And so in this video I decided to actually create the ideas that um, they proposed that kind of explain the creation of the moon and the potassium as well. So this is what they think happened. Let's go into the new simulation here. And we're going to put a proto-Earth right here in the middle and we're going to launch an object at it. So it's a Mars-sized object but it's actually very similar um, in composition to Mercury. So we're actually just going to launch Mercury um, at, at this planet and we're going to launch it almost exactly in the middle. We're just going to launch it somewhere right here because this will give us both the rotation that the Earth received from it and the spin as well. And now we're going to have Theia, which is the name of the planet that may have struck Earth, uh, approach Proto-Earth and hit it at a very, very slight angle. Basically, it's almost head on. Very high impact, very high pressure, temp uh, lots of temperature will be produced, and this will be a huge impact. This will actually produce quite a lot of fragments and a huge explosion. And so according to these scientists, this is actually what happened. And right after this, basically, this essentially vaporized the surface of Earth. This vaporized um, the actual planet Theia. And all of this vapor was released into the outer space or actually into um, close Earth space as vapor. It basically became space dust. So we're going to create this using... Um, the ring function in Universe Unbox, and we're going to create um, a sphere, but this is going to be a random sphere. So let's see how this looks if we just place it 
All right, so that's kind of good. The thing is, um, according to them, uh, th this dust was released up to a distance of about 50,000 radii of Earth. So we're going to do that as well. So it's actually, it was released very, 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 very far away. There's a, basically a huge dust cloud orbiting around our planet. Um, and let's actually just place a bunch of them everywhere, just so that it kind of makes more sense. And so there we go. It looks a little bit more realistic now. So there's all these uh, dust clouds orbiting around our proto-Earth. Proto-Earth is still obviously very hot. And all of this dust, as you can see, it starts coalescing into a ring. So with time, after uh, years, after maybe thousands of years, this will basically start becoming a kind of a ring-like structure, very similar to basically rings of Saturn. But because um, our planet is more dense and more compact, it would not be able to maintain these rings, and these particles would eventually start coalescing into um, what would be a proto-moon. Basically, large chunks, lar large rocks, large, you could call them asteroids, that would then uh, sort of slowly start becoming um, more massive. And with time, this is actually what would happen. You'd have these really large chunks orbiting around um, where the moon would eventually be because they would basically start coalescing into larger and larger particles. So this happened within a few thousand years and within a million years, uh, these chunks would start combining into one another and would eventually, obviously, start creating something that's, uh, that resembles the moon. So we are going to just do this right now. Uh, let's actually remove some of these particles because it's kind of slowing down my game. And now we just have the moon particles orbiting around and with time they would um, combine and some of them might actually fly away into the outer system, they might actually disappear completely, some of them might collide with one another, some of them might even collide with, the, with their Earth. Um, but the majority of them will actually coalesce into one large object and uh, would basically become the moon. So within a few million years, um, all of these objects will either combine, fly away, or disappear completely. So there's one that just flew away, it escaped into the outer um, Earth system, somewhere um, into other regions of solar system, or possibly um, may have collided with some other planet somewhere else. Uh, very likely Jupiter. But eventually, this will settle into, into a stable one moon, one Earth system. And in this particular simulation, it really only took us a few days. So there's one that just collided again, and it's very likely that it's going to be this piece that will stay here because it's more massive. And uh, its current orbit is a little bit elliptical, but with time it will very likely circularize. And there we go. So they just collided again, and there is our Moon-Earth system. Now, this moon is actually a little bit more massive than it should be. As a matter of fact, it's actually 10 moons, but we're going to change it to one moon. And... And so there you go, as soon as I change it to one um, massive moon, this is looking more and more like the system that we know today. So as you can see, there's a lot of fragments that flew away, a lot of fragments that uh, disappeared, and these fragments are somewhere out there, somewhere in our solar system, and we may even one day be able to catch one and see um, what uh, early Earth and what early moon actually looked like. But we obviously will not know which one it is until sometime in the future. Uh, but essentially, this is what I wanted to show you in this video, I wanted to kind of recreate this new theory and I actually think it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot more sense than just um, a collision just touching the surface of the earth because this would not explain the chemical composition of the moon rocks but this particular simulation and this particular sort of theory or I guess hypothesis does show us uh, both the chemical composition and the fact that it's very possible for the moon to actually be created from nothing but the space dust that orbits around our planet that then sort of coalesces into bigger fragments then in into even bigger fragments and then eventually becomes the moon itself and so there you go that's what happens and if you actually wait a few thousand or a few million years we will eventually get a perfect earth moon system so there's our earth and there is our moon orbiting around it earth is maybe spinning a little bit too fast that's because it had uh, the, uh, the original spin was actually faster than it should have been. Uh, but uh, this is the beginning of Earth, and then it will just have to receive a few more asteroids and a few more comets uh, to receive all of the water that we will have on it today. But the Moon is essentially going to stay this way forever. It's going to receive more collisions, of course, and get some more um, craters everywhere. But for now, in terms of composition and in terms of structure, it's going to stay like this forever. And that's essentially what we now think 
or we now believe, happened to our planet Earth in, um, early on in its creation, something like 4.2, 4.3 billion years ago. And this is how Earth and Moon were created. And this is why it's such an unusual system compared to other planets and other moons. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you still haven't subscribed, you'll click that subscribe button right now. I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll talk about something else space related, science related, or maybe even math related. And I'm going to teach you something else using video games. See you in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye. And I guess the question is, what actually did happen to all those other fragments and where did they all go? Will we actually be able to catch one? Has one of them actually fallen back to our planet Earth and maybe we've already discovered it? That would be pretty awesome. Because then we can actually look at the piece of early Earth and discover what it was like way before this collision even occurred.